We'll get some to you. And, there, and the sign-up sheet, so you get credit, is coming around. And the water is here, and that's free, too. These are not free. I wrote them. I'm Zach, and this is a welcome to the uh, 47th year. It's our 35th year of humanistic intervention training. I have written two books. One's called Changing Anger. One's called An Archangel Training Manual. This is a book of the skills and concepts we're going to talk about. And this is a book about why your soul bothers to learn these things. Um, different perspectives. They're available for 20 apiece to 35 for the pair. And you can see me at the end about those if you like. They're optional. These are free, and the water's free. Come up and get one if you want one. So, uh, Brad and I uh, will be teaching this today. Uh, Zach, this is Brad. Um, we are bums. Uh, how many of you are members of the Fair Family? A whole bunch. Most good. How many of you voted this year for the Board of Directors? <laughs> get out there and vote. This land belongs to all of us. We run it bottom up, so it's yours. And we elect a board of directors. And they're supposed to deal with law, philosophy, and mission and move us forward. And are responsible for the private nonprofit part. And they hire full time a general manager, we don't have as many as this morning, uh, who is Tom Gannon. This is his first year. Be nice to Tom. He went from working in recycling to juggling 20 balls in the air. Um, and the job is not easy. And he's got working for him. Well, there's a site manager, Shane, who's doing a great job. Uh, Crystal is, is the GM assistant. Those are all paid positions. Uh, and then there's about nine or ten bums, of which I am one. Uh, the bum stands for backup manager. Got two and walking up behind you. Look, there's two behind you. And there's two behind us. <laughs> uh, that's chocolate with the, with the lunch. And that's uh, Cotterfin and Jessica with the lunch. Uh, Brad and me, so that's almost half of Without us. lunch. Uh, are any other, any, without lunch, are there any? <laughs> we got set aside, so we're, we're good. Now, empathize, don't sympathize. That's one of the principles here. Tom, I know how it feels to miss my lunch, show. I'm not giving you any. You're pathetic. Right. <laughs> uh, are there any other coordinators here? No, but, the, oh yes, we have Fire Bill. He's in charge of the fire crew. He's going to talk to you for a few minutes, and then we'll do a warm-up. All right. Well, welcome to the Oregon Country Fair. You know what the wave is here, right? It's like this. <laughs> you know? That's a hi, how you doing? You know, anyway. Yeah, fire is a very, very important subject to pay attention to. <clears throat> Every year we have fires out here. People ask me all the time, you guys, I mean, your motto is don't make us work, so what's up with that? Um, well, we don't like to work, but we do. We work really hard not putting out fires. We work hard at prevention, and that's where you all come in. All right, we have uh, uh, in the guidelines every camp must have, if every camp must have uh, two five-gallon buckets, all right, with water and burlap. What's the burlap for? Anybody have any idea? Smother. 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 Beating, the, beating the kibatas out of it. Okay? Don't just try and smother. Take it and just beat it. Okay? Smack the crap out of it. Not dry. Yeah, wet. Please. Dry doesn't work real well. It kind of starts burning in your hand. One of those heavy errors. Yeah. Honestly, the number one fire we fire hazard we have out here are candles in tents. Please, no intense candles. Okay, please. And if you have candles outside, make sure they're attended. Because one of the second number one reasons of having fires out here are things falling out of trees in the candles that aren't covered. Okay? So, common sense stuff. Really it is. Keep your tent away from open flame. Pretty easy. The other thing that every camp has to have is a fire extinguisher. Okay? We're talking a five-pound minimum ABC rated fire extinguisher. You can get those at Bymart. You can get them at uh, almost anywhere. But we got a really special deal for getting them at Sanderson Safety. It's also called Mallory now. Um, and you mention to them OCF Happy Days, and they'll give you a hell of a discount. Okay? 
not quite five fingers, but it's close enough for saving your life. The other thing about fire extinguishers is uh, we have training. Okay, now you got this big, beautiful red brick, as Zach will talk about later. Uh, and what do you do with it? Well, we offer training on Wednesday and Thursday pre-fair, which I believe is the 6th and 7th, I think. Um, and uh, from noon till 5. And we'll be somewhere out around Miss Piggy's. We can't, not, we don't know exactly where because it kind of depends on the prevailing winds and so forth. And yes, we have real fire. We have a, a, a 4 by 4 fire apparatus that has propane hose and water in it so when you light it you got a flame height of about this high and and you get to walk up and feel the heat and put it out and you'd be amazed at how fast if you do it right you can put it out we've trained over 2,000 people in using fire extinguishers and we really want you guys to be the next group, uh, group that gets trained it's really really important fire extinguishers don't do you any good if your hands can't work them without your brain. <laughs> a few years ago, we had a, a fire start next to an info booth up at Daredevil, and the flame shot up 60 feet up the soak tree, 60 feet. And we have a, that can spread very quickly. And the guy who called it in, David, has been working info booth for 25 years, and these guys get out there, thank God, and they got the tree down, the fire out, and nobody got hurt. Middle of Saturday afternoon, 50,000 people on the property, <laughs> and this tree was in flames. Um, and David called me after and said, uh, you know, you do emergency response stuff and training and management. And I said, yeah. He goes, here's what I want you to hear. He goes, I look over to my left and I see the flame shooting up this tree. And a half a second later, there was no blood in my cortex. So I couldn't think, I couldn't read, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything that required logic. He said, I grabbed the fire extinguisher, which I knew was under the counter, red rock can't read the instructions, threw it away. I grabbed the box with all the hoses and valves and stuff the fire guys leave there with the written instructions, opened the box, closed the box. That was equally useless. <laughs> I grabbed the phone, he said, because my hands can work the phone without my brain. I've been working this booth for 25 years. And I went, yep, fire central, fire, 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 here's the location. After that, it was run away or beat it with a shirt because I only had those two options left in my lower brain. So. You gotta practice this stuff. I go back to medical. I'm talking to the medical coordinator in the hospital. There's 20 EMTs, docs, and emergency room nurses sitting around on duty. And I go, right now, how many of these people know where that fire extinguisher is? And he smiled and said, maybe half at the most. He said, and how many have ever used it? He said, two or three <laughs> out of 20, and that's in the hospital. So having it there ain't enough. And this practice really matters. And if you just take that practice and then you go through your head five or ten times, like this training, I'm going to teach you a lot about interactive skills. But the only thing that's going to matter is what you integrate. Insight does not control behavior. It's what you integrate into your habits. So you got to, whatever you learn from this, you got to take that and go about 15 times until you get some muscle memory, until your hands can do it, until you do it automatically. So that's important. This is not little shit. It's a big yeah. deal. It, it, it really is. And if you do see a fire, okay, there's three magic words that absolutely turn our day from really a whole lot of fun to not so much. And they are fire, fire, fire. Okay? And, and that's, if you have a radio, that's what we want you to respond with. Clearly and emphatically, fire, fire. Don't yell it because we may not hear you. You may be just garbled. Um, but, uh, Thank you, sorry. Uh, so anyway, fire, 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 and then you are our eyes and ears, okay? If you're there, you are the first line of defense, as it might be. It may be just on the radio that you know, already know how to use, and you tell us, look, it's in a tree, and it's, it's in a tree. That's good enough, okay? And, but we might come back and ask you for some more information, such as what's on the ground, Name your booth. Yeah, name your booth, what's your location, know those your booth types of number. things in the eights, that, are really, that really help. important. The booth numbers per size. Yes. But as Zach mentioned, uh, the, every info booth has a telephone line. We call them Tinkerbells. Um, that's often your quickest way 
Uh, if you know where your info booths are, you go straight to them and they'll let you or you tell them, I need Fair Central right away, we've got something that needs attention quick. So knowing where your info booths are, knowing your booth numbers, it helps you just uh, be ready for when something happens. Even something when I happens. sat with that medical coordinator and I said, okay, let's imagine this tarp catches fire right now, so now this wall is in flames. I grabbed the fire extinguisher, I go, number one, pull a pin. And Chuck, the medical coordinator, goes, that's not number one. <laughs> I go, it says number one, pull a pin. And he says, no, number one is get it off the wall. Because by the time the fire starts, it's bolted top and bottom. And you got to kind of, and I couldn't, if I'm not thinking, that's not going to be, I'll be going, yeah. and the fire is spreading. So, practice. Yeah, one last thing about okay. fires. Do, I'm sorry, I'm taking way too much time, but um, it's, it's really green out here right now, but these, these woods change dramatically over a period of a week of 85 to 90 degree weather, and with winds blowing, it's kind of like turning on a hair dryer, okay? So the conditions now are really nice, and they could be a whole lot different by the time we get to the fair. Oh. Coincidentally, that's our forecast for the yeah, next week. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Hot and sunny. Yeah. Hot all, and sunny. Our, all our fire pits should be permitted. Thank you. So have these guys come out, look at it, give you a thing to post near it that says this fire has been approved. If you see one that's not, try and find out whose fire it is and whether they got a permit and where they can right. post it. Right. Because yeah, otherwise you call on these guys and say you better check this one out. Yeah. Let's turn back here. Yes. Quick, that I took that training in the parking lot. It was incredibly liberating, and I'm going to take it again this year. It's cool. really cool to practice every year, and I had never touched a fire extinguisher or used one, and now I feel way more confident cool. that it could actually help. Made a yeah. new woman out of her. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, when we did main camp training, the, uh, we had a, a three-and-a-half-year-old go through, and that was so cool to see the look on her face when she put that fire out. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Uh, sorry, when is this happening? Oh yes, thank you. It's uh, yeah Tuesday or Wednesday and Thursday pre-fair, okay. July six and six and seventh, from noon to five. Noon to noon. Noon to noon. <laughs> noon to twelve. At, 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 at it'll be on Miss Piggy Piggy's someplace. Yeah. You know. And uh, let's see what All else. Right. What else? What else? I can't think of anything else. If I do, I'll probably do it when I'm walking away. So thank you very much. Yeah, Chocolate wants a word. This is Chocolate. She's been a bum with me for over twenty years. So. Locations for fire deal. <laughs> Out in the lots. So, you yeah. know what I mean? For buying them, you get a mix. Oh, oh. Just doing a read. Not the block book. Okay. Yeah, now we're going to talk about that. Real quick question about the where to get the fire extinguisher. Yeah, fire extinguishers, you can get a five pound ABC rated fire extinguisher almost anywhere. Um, and they're, I can't remember the price on them, but Sanderson Safety, it's, I believe, now called Mallory. They're, they're sixth and Conger, between sixth and seventh on Conger. And uh, just tell them OCF happy days and they'll give you a heck of a deal. You know, it, it is, it's really working. Last year we saw more brand new fire extinguishers in the box, soon to be taken out of the box. That's a good place for them to be too. That's number one, box. remove from box. <laughs> remove from box. And it, so, so I know it's working, so thank you. Thank you. things for you. Uh, first of all, how many of you really are first time camping at the fair people? Okay, good That's number you. of you. Welcome. Welcome. Virgin. Fair virgins, all right. Um, you will find this place is a little confusing. Uh, we have all these weird wacky names for things and uh, we have all these weird wacky rules. Um, so, when in doubt, just ask somebody because you you just you can't know all the weird stuff there is to know. And even although it's, I've been out here for longer than I would like to admit, um, I still don't know where everything <laughs> is on site. So, um, ask questions. Number two. Listen to this part really carefully. We tow improperly parked cars. <laughs> An improperly parked car is basically a car that is parked in one of two, is not parked in one of two places. How many people here?
here have ever heard of the scoff lot? <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. You're new, right? And even those of us that have been out here for years don't know it's a scoff lot. Okay, so there's two places to park your car once Wednesday rolls around. That is the scoff lot. To get to the scoff lot, I'm going to do it this way. You drive down Arrow Road. You know how you hit the greeter shed? They're over here on the left. You know, right on the this side, there's a parking lot on the right. That is the scoff lot. You can, I repeat, you can park there. Um, it's between you, Arrow and Bus Road. Between Arrow and Bus Road. So it's that little encapsulated space. Fills up quick. It fills up very, very quickly. Um, the other place that you can park without getting towed is called the out of sight lot. It's Just, way out nope. of sight. Nope. Nope. That way. It's way. It is literally out of sight. Out of sight. We own it, but you might you wouldn't know it was there. So essentially, to get there. You will follow the stream of other cars headed that way. <laughs> it is on the far west end of the property near 126. 126 is that big road that runs on the south side of our property. So head that way, follow the dust, and park in that lot. There is a shuttle. They will operate that on Wednesday and Thursday and on Sunday. So you can get back with your gear. Okay. It's long. You know, I'm so sorry. I don't know the operational hours of the shuttle. I apologize. Uh, that's something to ask maybe when you get on it, when you pick it up the first time. Um, they often do go a little bit longer than the posted hours to try and get as many people in as possible based on drivers. So, so again, two places you can park without getting towed. What was the first one? Scott. Right. And the second one? <laughs> now here's the confusing part. When you arrive on site to pick up your credentials, you'll go to something called the sticker booth. There's a history behind that. I won't get into it. But that is where you get your wristband. And as you come in with this big flow of cars, they will park you next to the sticker booth. And traffic is telling you to park there, right? So it seems like you should be able to park there, right? Only for a minute. No! 